thought you did a great job, and uh, I know it wasn't written by you, but how much creative input do you get to have while making a film like Belladonna? Yeah, um, well, the movie, or the, the screenplay was by Bill Mulligan, and, and basically I had uh, two months uh, where um, my girlfriend was out of town. She was doing something overseas, and so I was like, this is a good opportunity to make a movie, because I'm bored. So he sent me five different scripts, and this one really stood out. And um, I guess to answer your question, it uh, it went through a lot of different writing processes because it wasn't really, you know, she wasn't a snake in the original one and stuff like that. A lot of the dialogue's the same, but we had to trim it down. Um, the final piece ended up being 42 minutes. Wow. We cut, we cut it down to what we could to be able to make festivals. So I didn't right. expect it to be that long. It just was interesting, so we kept shooting. Right, and I do have to mention, because this festival, you've been on the circuit for a while, and I understand that this is the last time Belladonna is, is being last time Belladonna shown is at a festival. So thank yeah. you so much. We definitely appreciate yeah, it. And um, let's see here. I have some question about, uh, while you were the cinematographer, how much of that was just shot straight on, and how much post-production work was there to do, and was it all you who had to do it? Well, as far as... Uh, uh, practical effects go there was there was no digital effects in it it was all in camera so there really wasn't too much to do um, the lighting was pretty much all done in scene that was done by Matthew Moore um, he did an excellent job of lighting it so we didn't have to do too much tweaks uh, I think the whole process from you know changing the script up to having it edited was three weeks we did the entire thing so wow that's pretty good yeah how long did it take you to film the whole thing uh, four days. Four day. yeah. Wow, you're a quick worker. <laughs> <laughs> I just get excited. And, yeah, yeah we can totally understand that. <laughs> and that, you know, that comes through with your work and your camera work is awesome. What was your influence growing up? What was your favorite film? What got you into this? Um, well, I like the Italian stuff. So I like uh, Fulci and Argento and... Um, I guess I, I grew up kind of watching movies like Zombie. I mean, I, I suppose the first movie I was really hooked on because I grew up in such a small town in upstate New York that I found a Romero movie, it was Dawn of the Dead, and I, when I rented it, I never brought it back. I, I kept it. Um, but then after that, they had Zombie in there for some reason, which was, you know, they had it like gated off like it was X-rated for some reason in the store. Because but back then, I was yes. like, I like this one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Nice. Well, you learn guess, from the best for sure. Yeah. It's uh, a little bit different. You know, it's more about like um, the music and the lighting and all right. that. Right. Which is know, so important. There's a lot of pacing that does not have to have dialogue. Right, right. And uh, actually, I'm from upstate New York too, oh, but we cool. can talk about that later. Yeah. But I, when I was doing my research on you, you're a North Carolina transplant. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us why you came to North Carolina back in 08, I guess it was? Oh, um, well. Uh, I went to school in Florida, and then I applied for a lot of different jobs, and one that I got here was working for uh, Delta Airlines doing internal graphics, so I went to school for designing video games and stuff like that, and then I found out that I didn't really like the process as much, the rendering and all that, so yeah. <laughs> I ended up doing camera. I had always shot uh, music videos and skateboard videos and stuff like that, so it just seemed to... A natural transition to, to nice, do that. nice. And when you moved here, like the the North Carolina film industry was starting to get rolling and booming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm kind of new to the movies. I, I've done um, uh, a lot of commercials and stuff like that. That's my main thing is um, doing my video production company. But uh, I worked on this um, haunted like uh, haunted house commercial and I met all the special effects guys there so that's where we did my first movie and uh, after that I mean since we're all friends now we just make horror stuff I mean I love it anyways yeah. but that wasn't like I guess an intention to start doing all horror movies but now like it I'm Hooked, I mean, it just so. happened, right? Yeah. And like I said, yeah, shout out to the horror fans because they're like the best friends the best. anyone could ask for. Yes. Uh, let's open up to you guys. Do you have any questions? Yes. Oh, um, that goes back to influences. So, um, you know, some of the Italian movies are very much so, um, you know, torture in that kind of way. Uh, Fulci definitely had in zombie pulls, you know, a zombie pulls this 
woman's face into a spike and it stabs her in the eye and it's just it's kind of um, uh, in its giallo type of deal that it's doing. That's the only reason it's an eye poke. I mean, he didn't. Yeah, I guess that's just his thing. He just like poking people in the eyeballs, you know. <laughs> Great. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Red Scarlet W. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 I could see that. The Beyond, I guess, was the influence on that. Yeah. I thought it was cool, and uh, she had never acted before, so that was really cool. I did. I didn't know that the uh, the effects contacts were going to be so blinding, so she could actually barely see. So we had to walk her around by hand through set and stuff like that. So um, she was a trooper for sure. Definitely, yes. Were you part of the selective process in choosing the actors? Yes, I chose all of them. Yep. I, I thought they were all great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did a commercial with uh, Sterling. Yeah, he was the, the younger guy, and then I had done a music video uh, for Zach Wilde with uh, David Price, and so I knew him, and then she, she uh, sent in an audition, and she, um, she just seemed, like, perfect for it. You know, she kind of has that timeless look. So I think that's what I was going for. Very nice. Yes. That location was incredible. Um, can you talk about that, like where you found that and how much work you had to do? Yeah. Um, like most locations, they tell me no first. And then I go and visit in, in person and <laughs> convince them they, they should really have something shot here. So that place um, was called the Bowling Hacksaw House, the, the beginning place. And they had said no. But I said, hey, like, you know, I could, I could come and then give you a blueprint on how to do this in the future and all that kind of stuff and so they were they said sure and it, you know after the movie was shot they actually like remodeled the whole thing took all the vintage wallpaper everything down so that's kind of like the last thing that was ever shot there that it looks like that so thank you thank you thank you awesome anyone else out there yes yeah, um, I've got two features um, out right now. One's called Bombshell Bloodbath. It's, uh, it's a zombie movie. And then I've got uh, Phantasma, and that's a ballet slasher. And then the one I'm working on right now, I start production in November, is called Killer Babes and the Frightening Film Fiasco. And that one is really cool. Like, you should definitely check that one out. It's, uh, it's kind of like a Nightbreed meets Turbo Kid type of film. Uh, and it's got a lot of good talent in it. Awesome. I know we're all anxious to get to the orange carpet, but how about the Outer Banks? Do you think you'd ever choose here and come yeah, back to film here? Absolutely. Yeah, any day. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so thank you, Brett, so much for coming out. Thank you. Don't forget to autograph our poster over there. And for the rest of you guys, uh, you I think you brought some posters, too. Yeah, there's uh, posters. Feel yep. free to grab and, them. Uh, we have Sharpies. You should bring them out there and you can so people can get your autograph. If you want an autograph. <laughs> All right, guys, yeah, free. Yeah. You know, next time you see him, he'll be at a convention. He's like, that's 30 bucks, 20 for a selfie. Uh, do it the Sid Haig way. Say, it's $10, anything you want. I don't have kids in college. That's right, right. that's right. I guess you don't yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, give it up for Brett one more time. Thank you.